Depending of our global leadership teams and depending of our new product and solution pipeline, ours well with sectoral growth. Sustained growth and fiscal consolidation led to led to our credit rating upgrade to A with stable outlook from care ratings. We towards FY22 with an order book of more than rupees 5,000 crores. From R&D standpoint. Development of Wi-Fi 7 enabled access points and point-to-point and point-to-multipoint backhaul radios are in advanced stage. These products will be compatible to 5G networks in terms of their throughput capacity. Development of 5G radio and transfer products are also progressing well, and these products will result in, a, in companies' innovation to reach to global markets. A new initiative has also been undertaken to produce new types of optical fiber cables for the export market. I would also like to mention that the company has been able to increase its product revenue to a level of 43% in FY22 as against 27% in the last financial year. This trend is expected to be even better in the next financial year. The product revenue of FY22 was between 2,055 crores as against last year's product revenue or rupees 1205 crores. The export revenue of the company also increased significantly in the current year. As against export of rupees 201 crores in the financial year ended on 31st March 2021, export in the FY22 was 363 crores. We expect to double our export revenue in the current financial year again. That was the end of quarter four, financial year 22. The board has approved the expansion of our optical fiber as well as optical fiber cable manufacturing capacity to 22 million fiber kilometers and 34.7 million fiber kilometers equivalent cable per annum respectively, with an estimated capex of rupees 425 crores. This round of expansion will see our fiber and OSC capacities go up by 120% and 40% respectively. The move is also aimed at narrowing the gap between fiber requirements and cable capacities in order to further strengthen supply chain and improve our margins. Laying of optical fiber cable in the state of Jharkhand and the Bharatnath project got completed during the last quarter, providing connectivity to 1789 Gram through the GPO network. Our teams laid out 7,765 kilometers of cable network. With this, Jharkhand has become the first state in the country to provide connectivity to all the gram panchayats under the state-led model of Bharatnet program. We are proud that HSCL implemented this network. Financial 20, year 22 was also HSCL forming several strategic alliances and associations. We joined ORAN Alliance a worldwide community of mobile network operators, vendors, and research and academic institutions operating in the radio access network industry. The aim of this alliance to build much more intelligent, open, virtualized, and fully interoperable mobile networks. We'll focus on integrating and validating our 5G products and solutions with other ORAN Alliance members and contributors. We formed a partnership with Atracom, the leading artificial intelligence provider, powered Wi-Fi analytics technology provider. The aim is to integrate Atracom's artificial intelligence-powered solutions to our platform. Our entire Wi-Fi and UVR product portfolio will now have seamlessly integrated AI-powered network analytics, enhancing the experience of network service providers as well as end users. We chose Com Agility 5G new radio software for our 5G indoor small cell. Com Agility is a key technology partner in our effort to bring a complete portfolio products for 5G radio access and transfer network. We engage Inca Micro as distributor for our Wi Fi and UVR line of products with an aim to leverage their stronghold in channel distribution in India and SARC countries. Let me now with you on key performance metrics the quarter and 12 months ended FI22. Revenue for quarter 4 FI22 stood at 1183 crores as compared to 1215 crores in Q3 of FI22 
and 1391 crores and Q4 of FI 21. EBITDA for the current quarter is still at 154 crores as compared to 174 crores in profit, 3 of FI22 and 187 crores of Q4 of FI21. EBITDA margin stands at 13.02% for quarter 4 of FI22 as compared to 14.32% for quarter 3 of FI22 and it is stood at 13.44% in quarter 4 of FI21. For quarter 4 FI22, profit after tax stands at 68 crores as compared to 81 crores of quarter 3 of FI22, which stood at 86 crores in quarter 4 FI21. Tight margin stands at 5.75% in quarter 4 of FI22 as compared to 6.67% in quarter 3 FI22 and 6.18% in Q4 of FI21. Segment revenue for telecom products is in the quarter skewed at 585 crores, which is 49% of quarter 4 of FY22 revenue, as compared to 388 crores, which was 28% of quarter 4 of FY21 revenue. The increase in input costs, including optical fiber, optical fiber, plastics and semiconductors, and logistics during last quarter, has put pressure on the operating margin. This will possibly get offset with increase in realization in the coming quarter. For the 12 months ended, 31st March 22, the company reported consolidated revenue of rupees 4,727 crores as against 4,423 crores in March 21. EBITDA of rupees 93 crores as against 585 crores in March 21. Profit before tax of 442 crores as against 337 crores in March 21. Profit after tax 326 crores as against 246 crores in March 21. From these numbers, for the financial year, we can note the progress made by the company and stronger performance shown by the company compared to last year. The receiver cycle has also come down to 160 days in FI22 from 214 days as compared to FI21. Debt in absolute terms has reduced to 730 crores as against as at 31st March 22 from 922 crores as at 31st March 21, resulting into debt equity ratio of 0.26 only. Looking ahead, our drive continue innovating and widening our product offerings and expanding our global footprint, footprint shall further strengthen our growth foundation. With continued shift in revenue mix, growth in our catalog of products and innovation, we are confident to emerge as a name to recall with across various markets. Thank you once again, ladies and gentlemen, for your keen participation. With this, I conclude my opening remarks and open the floor for question and answer session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one at this time. The first question is from the line of Sanjay Shah from KSA Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, gentlemen, sir. Thanks for uh, presenting the result. Uh, so my question was regarding FY23, and if we extrapolate it and go to even FY24, what opportunity we see for our company and where we are ready and you be as a company and as a leader, how, where you see the opportunity for our company? Uh, thank you, Mr. Shah, and good question. Look, you know, FY23 comes up with multiple opportunities, India and worldwide. Why I'm saying worldwide also? Because we are focusing to a large extent in the export market also. In terms of opportunity, in the current financial year, as you all are reading in newspapers today, that 5G auction is going to be held very soon. 
profitable in June. Now, with the 5G option being held and networks to be expanded by operators who take 5G spectrum, there is a large growth in demand of fiber optic cable and also very wideband radios, both of which would be required to connect the different cell sites, which would be many more in numbers because the 5G has a coverage limitation because of higher frequency range. So demand of fiber optic cables and wideband backhaul radios which grow up significantly, significant growth would be there in these two products demand. Similarly, demand of other kind of telecom infrastructure will increase significantly because network rollout would happen uh, by operators and it will completely large extent of new rollouts for 5G networks. Now, when the 5G network grows, accessory equipment like Wi-Fi, like Wi-Fi 7, for example, which we are also developing, Wi-Fi 6, which is already under our product range, backhaul radios for Wi-Fi backhaul, broadband connectivity, all this will grow significantly. Then the transport products of 5G, routers, switches, they are also going to, demand is going to grow significantly. Good thing is that we have uh, huge capacity for manufacturing fiber, fiber optic cables, and that capacity is being expanded, keeping this new, the large scale network expansion in fiber optic cable to take place. We are inducting wideband radios, E band radios in our product range. We are having Wi Fi 6, 7, and uh, 7 is under design, of course, and also uh, unlicensed band backhaul radios for the same usage. We are designing router switches. So all this put together, you will find we are getting ready for the new kind of products which should be required for 5G network, uh, uh, which is to be laid out by the operators who take 5G spectrum. Second, big demand is coming from Bharatnet. As you would have read in newspapers again, government has now decided to construct this network on EPC mode, where contracts would be given to uh, companies to implement the entire network. But we hear this, uh, you know, from different sources, the total requirement of the fiber optic cable is going to be more than 15 lakh kilometers in next three years. 15 lakh kilometers, which is a huge, huge demand opportunity. Now, 15 lakh kilometers of fiber optic cable will be required for linking all the villages which are to be linked in Bharat. Earlier it was Gram Panchayat, now it is villages over fiber optic cable to give broadband connectivity. Now, it would not only be fiber optic cable, it would be a lot of different kind of equipment, you know, transport equipment, access equipment, which would be required for this purpose. And total capex estimation in our estimation is going to be more than 70, 75,000 crores, including installation commissioning expenses. Now, fortunately, HFCL is present all these market segments. So this is, again, going to be a massive demand opportunity. And your company has experience in all these areas with cable, equipment, installation, commissioning, ETC capabilities. So we have second large level of new demand coming up, apart from normal expansion of network, which is going on anyway. There's a third opportunity. Since we are looking at export market, and as I mentioned in my initial uh, presentation, that we have been able to increase our exports uh, from 125 crores or so to 361 crores in the current financial year. We are looking to make it about 2.5 times of the current, uh, last year in the current financial year. The 361 crore is probably going to be somewhere around 800, 900 crores. That's the target we have fixed up for ourselves. So, worldwide, the demand of fiber optic cable and associated equipment is increasing significantly. The reason is the large expansion of fiber to home network worldwide, whether it is North America, whether it is Europe, large scale expansion of fiber optic cable network and FTTS network is taking place. We are also discussing with uh, different operators in some countries to uh, take contracts for, take uh, business for establishing such networks for them and supplying fiber optic cable in any case to many such operators. And that's where our increase in export potential comes up. So, indigenous demand for 5G network expansion, uh, 5G network, Bharat Net network, expansion of FTTH network worldwide, including that in India. And we are the largest implementer of uh, FTTH network in the country. All this put together, there is a huge demand opportunity, and we are fully geared up for that. 
So we have fiber optic cable capacity which we are increasing. We have equipment, we are designing new equipment which would be available for sales. And we are going international also by increasing our sales capacity. So we are in a very good position to take advantage of this expansion in the market FY23 and beyond. That's really helpful, sir. Really helpful. So my next question was, can you highlight something about uh, our progress on our uh, defense equipment side? So defense equipment, there are two kinds of defense equipment. Right? So defense communication equipment and defense electronics. Now, as you know, defense business takes time to, you know, get qualified and long-drawn trials and then eventual supplies. So we are designing uh, software-defined radio for defense, which will submit for validation sometime by the end of this year. We have designed electronic fuses, which are undergoing trial as we speak now, which are undergoing trial in different places right now as we speak. Uh, night vision devices. Again, they are undergoing trial as we speak. So, defense equipment, whatever you know, design has been finished, they are undergoing trial. Software defined radio is under design. And at the same point of time, we are working on a couple of other defense equipment, uh, which would be required by the Indian Defense Forces in near future uh, to design them and to manufacture them. Now, uh, and, and, and you know, as you would have again uh, seen in media, Government has decided that a large portion of defense equipment is to be procured indigenously by indigenous manufacturing. So this again gives a great relief to our business model because in our business model in defense equipment, what we have done primarily to manufacture indigenously with a huge amount of local content, which makes us far more competitive. So our whole policy for all strategy to design locally, manufacture locally, has proven to be very correct with the need of the time. So government is insisting local manufacture, the large percentage of Indian components which can only happen if you design in India, and which is going to be helping us to generate more revenues for from defense products in the next few coming years. In the current year, in our annual operating plan, we have not taken into account any significant revenue from defense electronics. So defense communication revenue is going to come. For defense electronics, we have not taken any revenue. We expect this revenue to start coming up from the financial year 24, which will further increase the revenues of the company. That's great, sir. Thank you very much for answering questions, sir. I'll come back in queue for further questions. Thank you. Thank you. Reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one at this time. The next question is from the line of Cyril Sate from Insect Securities and Finance. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. So my first question was, uh, what is our R&D development in the 5G area as we were developing some hardware which is supposed to cater to the 5G technology? So where are we on that side, sir? Thanks, well, in 5G, you know, we are two different kind of equipment. One is 5G radios and transport equipment. In the radio equipment, we are designing small cells and macro cells of different kinds. Small cells is for indoor or some outdoor application also, but macro cells is for large scale application for, you know, on the, what we call the base stations of the towers you see for uh, massive, uh, you know, communication capacity. Now, these designs are already happening. We are tied up with the world leaders in this arena to give us uh, software stacks and, you know, designing capabilities, and these are going to be our own design where our R&D team is engaged together with other engineering companies to design these products. Uh, and, and these designs are progressing very well. For small cells, macro cells, all is progressing very well. And uh, sometimes uh, within this current financial year, this uh, uh, later part of this financial year, these products will start uh, coming in on stream for uh, uh, showcasing it to the customers uh, in the current financial year itself. Second leg of uh, these products is uh, front all gateways, which are the kind of routers from the cell side and access routers and distribution routers, they are also going to be in our production line uh, sometime during this current financial year. So this is progressing well, and there is going to be a 
very large demand opportunity for these products because as the 5G networks come, everybody would be requiring these products because these are the large volume products which will be required by all the operators, not only in India but export also. So we are daring for India and export. So I would like to re-emphasize here the demand opportunity is massive, whether it is for 5G network equipment or whether it is for fiber optic cable and associate optical uh, transfer equipment. And your company is totally geared up to take advantage of these opportunities by becoming more competitive than its peers, peers because of its own design, its own manufacturing capabilities, and also a uh, very competitive design because it has been designed in India and software also being designed in India, owned in India. So these, these are the massive competitive advantage we have uh, for this equipment. And also fiber optic cables because the massive quantities you produce. We have a competitive advantage and also because of the backward integration of optical fiber, that gives us a further competitive advantage. Moreover, in terms of capability to put fiber in the ground, we have the highest amount of work in the country. So we are again in a good position to take advantage of emerging opportunities in Bharat Net. So the massive expansion taking place now. I find HFCL is in a never before good position to take advantage of the opportunities which are there in front of us because of these expansions which I talked about. For the optical fiber cable industry, uh, what is the growth outlook uh, and how are we positioned to benefit from this growth? What steps are we taking to, you know, uh, uh, extract uh, maximum opportunity in optical fiber cable? Look, as I explained a little earlier to answer the question of Mr. Shah, yeah. the amount of uh, fi optical fiber cable increase is coming once a network, network, uh, new network is laid out, 4G network expansion, expansion of fiber to home network, I'm talking about India right now. And more importantly, Bharatnet, where is more than 15 lakh kilometers of fiber optic cable additionally will be required. So all these present a huge demand opportunity. And then coupled with increased exports from our side to different countries for backhaul as well as backbone as well as FTTH application of fiber optic cable. Now, definitely, you know, we would be needing higher capacities to fulfill these demands. And that's why we are expanding our capacities to manufacture fiber optic cable by about another 10 million fiber kilometers equivalent cable. We are expanding our capacity for uh, manufacture optical fiber from 8 million currently, which is undergoing expansion to 10 million, to ex expansion of 22 million, which is an uh, expansion from current capacity of uh, 8 million to 22 million. Uh, to, to fill up the gap between our manufacturing of cable and fiber. So, massive expansion is taking place with a cost of more than 400 crores to take care of this demand opportunity which is there in front of us. So, demand is increasing so as we are increasing our capacity. And mind you, we have the highest market share within India for fiber optic cable. We have the highest market share. And we expect to continue to maintain that increase in our capacity and competitiveness. Sir, I'll fall back in queue. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Guru from Word Group. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for giving an opportunity. Uh, not only thanks for giving the clear idea about HSPL products and uh, the kind of demand it will have going forward. Uh, I've got a couple of questions, like uh, my first question is regarding this uh, NDU, that is uh, non-disposal undertaking of equity shares of uh, Sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Guru. Please include, uh, use the handset yes. mode, sir. Hello? Can you hear me now? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my first question is regarding this NDU, non-disposal of uh, non-disposal undertaking of equity shares. So after releasing the pledge shares, uh, just want to have some idea, clear idea about uh, the purpose of. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll, let me first explain answer to this question. Look, you know, pledge has been released. Non-disclosure undertaking is there from the promoters, part of promoter share, that while the bank loans are existing, promoter should not sell its share and run away. You know, that's a non-disclosure, uh, non-disclosure, disclosure undertaking bank state. That till the time bank loans are existing, you know, the promoter should not sell significant part of its shares and run away and leave the banks high and dry. That's the kind of protection bank takes from everybody. 
So out of the total number of shares of I, I, 54 crores crore of the promoter shares, 24 crores uh, equivalent shares non-disposal undertaking has been taken by banks. It's no pledge. Let me tell you, no pledge. It's only non-disposal undertaking that promoters will not sell 24 crores of the share out of 54 crores of their total and, and uh, holding. Still, the time bank loan are existing. That's a very standard thing. Okay. Yeah, uh, fine. Uh, and my second question is, uh, yeah, as for the last phone call, uh, it was uh, given to understand that out of uh, uh, the funds raised uh, through PYP, about 150 crores will be utilized for uh, repayment of loan, if I'm not wrong. So, any plans to go ahead with that? Then? Mm -hmm. So, we have already paid. We have already done that. We have already repaid those loans. Okay, fine. And my last question is regarding this uh, Sterlite patent infringement. Uh, we have seen some notification in BSE, but later on now there is no update on that. Look, you know, I will not uh, talk much about a case which is already under co in court. But, you know, we have already uh, informed the court, we have already informed the Honorable Court that this is not correct. Infringement is not there. That stay was given on ex party basis without even hearing us. This, whatever they have claimed of the infringement of their patent of 2016, we have been producing that kind of a cable from 2013 or even before that. And we have been supplying to our customers. Our customers have given affidavit in the court that they have been buying this cable from us from 2013. And even customers have submitted their specifications also, and our bills and their orders and everything has been submitted to Honorable Court. This is subjudice. But I can all tell you, it's not, uh, there's no infringement in this case. It is just, uh, I don't know why they launched this. And uh, this still was taken ex party. But in any case, court has given us permission to keep on exporting the orders we get. We give list to the court, and the export has been approved for us. Okay, yes, thank you. Uh, all the best, yeah, that's it from my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saket Kapoor from Kapoor and Company. Please go ahead. Yeah, Namaskar, sir, and uh, uh, thank you for this opportunity. Sir, uh, firstly, out of the total order book, uh, uh, how much is uh, skewed towards the export part, sir? So, the export orders are always coming in bits and pieces. They are not, you know, out of 5,000 crores, you will not find that there are, you know, uh, some thousands of crores. But I think the total export uh, order available in hand is about 225 crores. Against the total export target, we have about, you know, as I mentioned, we wish to increase by 2.5 times of the 360 crores of all the export we had in the current year. So 225 crores of order, which is to be supplied, uh, you know, next couple of months, is a good number if you look at our current export target. We'll be able to fulfill without any problem. Uh, and sir, what have been our capex for FY22, uh, including what have been the maintenance capex, and uh, what is our capex target for FY23? Yeah, I will just get these numbers and come back to you. If you have any other questions? Yeah, yes, sir, I have, sir, a couple of them. Sir, what is our net debt level, uh, Jensab, and what is our uh, cost of uh, fund? Uh, just one second. Yes, sir. And also, sir, then coming on to the uh, this trunky services part segment, sir. Sir, sorry, sir, Mr. Kapoor, I missed your question, you know. No, sir, issue, sir. Question I, 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 R&D or CapEx? Uh, sir, the maintenance CapEx, R&D, uh, both if you could give uh, the breakup okay, you know, for FY22 and our target yeah. for CapEx, as I mentioned, uh, sir, I missed your question. I thought you were asking about R&D and you were asking about CapEx. Sir, but, 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 sir, don't worry. Don't worry, sir. You know, our CapEx ka target is in the current year, because we are going for extension of fiber and fiber optic cable, current year's capex target is about 500 crores, including that of R&D, about 500 crores. Okay, sir. For FI23? Yeah. And how much we have spent for FI22? FI22, because there was uh, some bit of capex and some bit of R&D. Total would have been around about uh, 125 crores or so. So from 125, we are going up to 500. Absolutely, because we raised capital also, if you recollect, for the yes, purpose of yes. extension only. 
सर लास्ट ईयर इन इन सम ऑफ दी कॉल्स यू हैव आल्सो मेंशन दैट कुछ सब्सिडी मिलने की थी गवर्नमेंट से एंड देयर वाज आल्सो फॉर बिग इनकम टैक्स रिफंड हैव दोस थिंग मैटेरियलाइज फॉर द लास्ट ईयर या इनकम टैक्स रिफंड हैज ऑलरेडी कम एंड सब्सिडी पार्ट ऑफ द स्टेट सब्सिडी ऑलरेडी हैज बीन अप्रूव्ड एंड द रेस्ट ऑफ द सब्सिडी फॉर सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट दैट हैज आल्सो बीन अप्रूव्ड बट द डिसबर्समेंट इज येट टू टेक प्लेस वी एक्सपेक्ट ऑन द कपल ऑफ मंथ्स डिसबर्समेंट विल हैपन एंड हाउ मच इज द रिसीवेबल सर ऑन दैट फ्रंट I think that should be about uh, uh, 45 crore, 45 or 47 crores. I think. Acha. And sir, about the net debt number, sir, uh, the net debt level as on uh, after the capital raising exercise, uh, what is our net debt? It is 730 crores net debt level, as against 920 crores of last year. Okay, this is after raising 600 crores. Yes. Acha, sir. and uh, sir and the other expenses part sir we have found that uh, the other expenses uh, have uh, uh, disproportionately gone up so if you could explain uh, the the reason uh, in commensurate to the turnover the other so, expenses is, are slightly higher so any one of item there yeah so this has increased one because of the logistic cost i mean uh, the trade on uh, logistic exports has increased then some r and d expenses has been expensed off uh, maybe around the 5 crore or so And then we have written off some of the debt, which is 2.5 crore, and 2 crore of the provision has been made during this quarter against the, as the ECL provision uh, against the okay. ECL. Okay, so this has gone up from sir, uh, if I take the number for March 21 from 47 crore to 78 crore, that is a significant 30 crore rupees uh, change. Yeah, uh, total, all that what has been explained. Uh, uh, some additional expenses on the export side because we have to increase our exports by a large volume. So mm-hmm. we have increased export-related market development expenses and the other expenses which Mr. Raviyajan mentioned just now. So all total up, it will be this kind of number. So sir, this will be this will continue going forward also because of the higher freight cost is still so, there. Know, this is freight cost which is the significant portion of it is the freight cost, higher freight cost. You know, it uh-huh. has happened. Uh, in the rich past, because of these logistical issues, which the world is facing, now whether this will continue or will go down, that all depends upon geopolitical situation. I, I, I am not, uh, you know, I cannot uh, give any forecast on that because, as you know, this is a completely different uh, geopolitical situation, which will determine this kind of a, uh, this kind of a. uh whether it will go up okay. or not it may further go up who knows or it may go down also in the situation okay. sir on the trunky contract and services segment we have seen a uh, degrowth in revenue whether quarter on quarter or year on year sir how will you explain uh, that no, the reason no, no need of explaining this is our strategy i have been telling you from the very beginning that our revenue from products will go up and from epc will go down that has been the thought out strategy of the company And as you would see, product revenue which is 27 percent has gone up to 43 percent. Mm. So which is a significant shift and which is a well thought out strategy, and it uh, will keep on happening in future. Uh, but that has not compensated to the profits, sir. Mane, if we take the profitability part, the profitability has gone down. So, so profitability on an absolute has number. stayed in this Q4 because of the increase in input cost. Okay. As I, as, I, as, I, as I mentioned to you, Mr. Kapoor, in the very beginning itself, that in Q4 all input costs have gone up, which is you would have seen everywhere. Plastics, you know, which are major raw materials for fiber optic cable, costs have gone up tremendously. Fiber, fiber we used to purchase last year at a price of 248 rupees per kilometer. Right now we are purchasing at 430 rupees per kilometer, 440 rupees per kilometer. So input cost has increased significantly. If you look at EBITDA margins, from an EBITDA margin, you know again you will find that uh, there has been a significant shift in quarter four because of this increased uh, input cost. You know, uh, which is uh, which is worldwide well trend. Right. And what are the current OFC prices, sir? But, but wait, wait a second. Let me complete. Please, sir. If you see on a year-to-year basis. year to year basis this was a study of quarter four if you see year to year basis in the march 21 the ebitda margin was 13.23% march 22 it is 14.66% had the things not been different in the q4 this would have been even better but these are nothing to do with the company these are geopolitical situation trades have gone up input costs have gone up fiber price gone up plastic price gone up 
semi conductors are not available there is a worldwide shortage of semi conductor so to get a ready stock you have to pay higher prices which we have done you know we have to supply to our customers so this is a temporary phase which has happened which may very well continue in the q1 also of the current year but of course two things will happen we expect this thing to ease out in q2 but at the same time now our new contracts or sale prices are also increasing our sale prices are also showing increase because as we have input cost so new orders we are taking at increased prices also so all put together this would balance out in the q2 so q1 there might be some impact of this situation thank you the next question is from the line of hardik vyas from et please go ahead uh good evening sir uh most of my questions have been addressed but one of my questions is uh, in 5g telecom equipments how is the competitive intensity uh, uh who who else is likely to supply those products to uh if i would differentiate in two parts one is local manufacturers and another is international now international all the large companies which you hear the names you know ericsson nokia samsung would be there Chinese would also also not, would also of course not be there because India and Chinese are no longer being allowed. In Indian companies, in 5G radio equipment, Tejas uh, would be there, which is now a Tata company. Hmm. They would be there, and uh, I don't know if any other company is working on 5G radio network development. I don't know any company which is doing a large extension. Maybe I heard of Starlight earlier, but I don't know the latest status. But we are of course going. So local companies, I heard the name of Sages. Uh, they are doing it, of course. Uh, we are doing it, uh, and we will, uh, of course, do it for small cell and large cell. Uh, both, uh, we would continue to do it. So, okay, so uh, national so companies should be local I companies. Think. But you know, I tell you one thing. Hmm. Where we look at our competitive advantage, one for all contracts which are. Bharat Net kind of contracts where, well, of course, radio equipment are not there, but all other equipment are there, including some of the equipment which are common used in 5G or optical network. They are all made in India, so we always get a preference to supply such equipment if it is made in India. And ours is made in India. Number two, our software cost and everything is local development, so cost of development is much lower than others. Manufacturing in India, so it is more competitive. So overall, we find ourselves more competitive in terms of competition with international players. And I would give you an example: Wi-Fi and uh, UBI radio, which we have produced, we are very well able to compete with all international players, and we've got a good market share in the beginning itself. We've got a very good market share, and we are also radio products. So I'm sure, you know, going uh, taking advantage of our existing success and good products. we shall be able to uh, sell our products very well in the local market and on the international market also uh, sir would you be able to quantify how competitive we would be as uh, compared to tejas uh, because i believe that uh, as compared to the overseas players we definitely would be more competitive but uh, as far as tejas goes how but you know i i won't say that i would be more competitive less competitive than tejas this you know prices have to come out yeah. but your know, market is so big so big that two or three or four players can coexist without any problem you need not be cutting throat of each other in such a huge market opportunity okay and uh, uh, does it make sense to compare our pricing with uh, uh, overseas players like ericsson or nokia yes you know well you know we are still not seeing the prices of 5g products and all that those sales to start in india but in my personal opinion we should be competitive to them by 10 to 30 percent margin okay okay i get it so my next question was uh, on our margins uh, you said that all the input costs have gone up in the fourth quarter and uh, are we looking at those uh, things uh, stabilizing in this quarter end of this quarter and going forward coming back to the earlier margins because our product so i will i will tell you two three things that you know for fiber optic cable for example there are two major raw materials one is fiber and another is what is based on crude you know which is plastic which is jelly and all those kind of thing okay. fiber prices looks like they are stabilized now you know it increased significantly but in last one month i am seeing that prices are more or less stabilized 
supply position has become little bit worse because of different reasons. It's a lockdown in China. As you see, about 27 cities are locked under lockdown. And so factories have suffered and also the posts are closed, so despatches are not happening. So there has become a supply constraint. We have been able to, you know, still fill on our factories to fill capacity because one, half of our requirement of fiber we produce ourselves, half we import. So that half, I mean, we were in a very comfortable position, but now we have to really, you know, do a lot of things organized and then, then only are able to get fiber, which is required by us. But fiber prices have started stabilizing, it should no longer increase. Okay. Now, coming to plastics and all that kind of things. Now, this is a very wide geopolitical situation with what is happening in the war, Ukraine, Russia war, and all those kind of things. I, I cannot predict what would happen there because if the war continues with the same level of things, it is continuing, then I think crude prices will remain around the same, it will not increase. So, God forbid, this <laughs> two, three more countries get involved in the war, which we do not know. None of us can predict, none of us can have any influence in that. If such kind of things happen, then who knows, crude prices may go up and then the plastic prices may go up. So this is completely a situation which none of us can predict, but I don't think it is likely to happen. If the Ukraine-Russia war continues at the same level, maybe crude prices will also be maintained around the same level and there may not be any increase in the plastic prices any longer because they have already increased quite a bit. So I think, you know, given any very abnormal situation, the prices which have gone up should remain around the same kind of prices with some possible increase in the plastics. But what we are doing to hedge against that, now we are asking our customers to give new orders at increased prices, which customers are also responding because they also know that uh, price input has gone up, so output prices have also go up without any doubt. So we are now balancing it out in the current time, current quarter. Okay. And uh, with 5G auctions happening, we would see uh, turnkey services orders also flowing in with the products as well or we are not likely to take up any turn? No, 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 I tell you, we, will, we, are, no, we are not going to refuse any order. With the 5G happening, Bharat Net happening, more orders are going to come up, more orders will come up for products and some orders for EPC, you know, the turnkey also. Both will happen. And if there are good orders with a good profitability margins in turnkey also, well, there is no need for us to refuse. If, you know, for example, Reliance, for example, G, or, or with any other customer, we are good pay masters and if they, Geo, Airtel, anybody, if they expand their network and they are good pay masters and they give us orders for currency also, why not to take that? But on the overall basis, our product revenue will have a higher growth than the currency services and that is the strategy. We have decided that product revenue should grow more rapidly than the APC revenue. Okay, that would also drive our margins better. Yes, sure. Okay. Thank you so much, sir, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nabijit Mitra from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my question. I have a few data questions. Um, so firstly, on your uh, product revenue for the quarter um, and for the full year, uh, how much of it is contributed by uh, fiber optic cable uh, for the quarter and how much is it access products, if you can uh, break uh, it I up? I can explain you, just give me a moment. You know, uh, of the uh, financial year ended 22, the total revenue has been 2,055 crores for exports. Out of it, 1,700 crores is by optical fiber cable and balance is by different products. Balance is by different products, which includes uh, which most access includes products access products, and, uh, but, uh, and all those kind of accessories. Yeah, but this, this does not include any defense products as of yet. No, 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 not at all, not at all. As I explained in the beginning itself, I have not taken any sales of defense products even the current year also in our AOP. We are all targeting for the next year because the testing and all that is going on. For example, I tell you one example. Electronic okay. fields. Right now the testing is going on in Balasur and Itarsi. Now, this is, you know, not full-fledged live testing, uh, live firing. It is live firing with a low charge. After this is done, next level of testing will occur in Pokhran and Sikkim in high altitude, in a cold and very hot conditions. 
then only you know tender will be opened up and evaluate an order will be placed so defense which it takes long long time so we expect the defense products revenue to come from next year only neither there was any revenue in the current year uh, i'm talking defense electronics defense communication definitely we are rolling out the large defense network but yeah. defense electronics any revenue would come from next year only okay 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 so just to you know just to highlight here the telecom products revenue for the full year was around 2100 crores out of which fiber uptake is around 1700 crores and the rest is access products yeah and uh, this 1700 crores would involve how much million kilometer of fiber as in uh, as in fiber optic cable uh, well, fiber fiber you know, fiber number of kilometers i don't have that data at the moment how many fiber kilometers uh, while we are in the call i will try to Get you the data because I do. that is a I can let you know. <laughs> no, no worries, no worries. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no worries, no worries. In terms of access product revenue, the you know 300 crores of revenue that we have seen in FI 22, how is that expected to grow as per you? Look, you know, this product is revenue as fiber optic cable and other things. You know, which include accessories and access products and all that. No, yeah. Current year we are looking at starting export of these products also. Till now we have not exported. So I think you know this revenue from this one fiber optic cable product should be around uh, 250 to 300 crores in the current year. 300 crores plus, you know, we think no sorry 450 crores. 450 crores including exports should be about 450. Yeah, 450 crores, including exports in FI23. Uh, that's the expected numbers what I could get. Yes. Okay, okay, got it, got it. Uh, my next question is, you know, regarding the state subsidy that we can see sitting in the other income almost to the extent of 15 crores, 15, 15 crores. Um, the, the subsidy under state incentive scheme. Uh, if you can sort of break it up, you know, where, where exactly is it coming from and how much can it increase over the course of next couple of years? Or what is it linked to? So if you can sort of just uh, lay it out for us. I believe the 15 crore included in other income is towards uh, interest subsidy. Uh, the interest from the date the, the, the plant uh, commenced the production in January 20 till March 22. So per quarter it is coming around 2.4 crore, uh, something like that. So as it, it was related to earlier period and uh, this uh, approval came uh, in March only, so it has been shown and clubbed as the other income. Now henceforth the interest will be lower by say 2 crore each quarter, henceforth. And th then there is a capital subsidy also 30 crore. So uh, our block of the fiber unit will be reduced to that extent, and depreciation will be low, there will be lower depreciation going forward. Okay, okay. So this this uh, benefits are there for the new capex also. Yeah, this will be there for the you are talking about the current year's capex. Yes, I think the 425 or whatever you are spending. To there will be some other set of incentives which which we which we will come to know as, as we progress. Okay, okay, and it will be spread across locations where you're expanding, right? It's not linked yes, to one yes, location. There will be a, uh, you know, a lot of incentives and spread all across locations, absolutely. Okay, okay, but the formula and all is not yet known. That will come to know as... Uh, the discussion you know. and will know in the next couple of months. Okay, next couple of months. Got it, got it. And my last question is on defense. You know, you have shown the market opportunity of almost three and a half billion dollars. Yeah. Um, uh, the the sort of uh, and that's the total addressable market. Now, uh, out of this three and a half billion dollar, how much uh, do you expect to capture, and what's the time frame, and you know which are the products where you are most optimistic about? You know, there no, are four no, products. No, no, years we are not looking at any revenue from this defense products. Yeah. Now, future, of course, uh, we are quite bullish. Market opportunities. Fuses, electro optics, which is the night vision, massive market opportunities. We are looking at that. One. Two, uh, we have also participated in a couple of other market opportunities, which are defense related. And I would not like to talk too much about all those things, you know, because they are sometimes uh, defense is not very happy about talking in public. But for example, I can give you, which is open, 
uh, upgradation of uh, our armored personnel carrier BMP-2. There also we have participated in that opportunity. That's also a very large opportunity, upgradation of more than 600 vehicles of their night vision devices and control systems and all, all that is electronic. We have participated. So such kind of opportunities are there we are working on, which is related to our area of work, you know, night vision devices or PJs and all those kind of things. So from next year onwards, we believe that we will be able to start getting revenue from defense equipment also. And I expect next year, something like 500 to 700 crore range uh, revenue we should be able to get from defense products, electronic products, communication apart from defense electronics, 500 to 700 crores this next year. And then it will increase substantially, very substantially. Once you are in, then you start supplying. So next year as in FI-24, you mean, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Got it. Got it. No, no, this is very helpful. And lastly, I and forgot... Know, I must uh, tell you one thing. Opportunities yeah. in defense now are becoming as big as communication equipment opportunities. It only takes time. Some time is taken in defense because the testing itself is a huge, you know, uh, it involves a huge time frame because of, you know, defense has to go through those kind of tests and all that. Now, I'll give another thing, you know, what we are doing. Fiber optic cable. Now, defense requires a tactical cable which is, you know, they need to lay on the ground in case of a war and all that. They keep on laying on the ground and keep on rolling it up and then taking it somewhere else. And it is so strong that even a tent rolls over that, it still does not break. So we are now starting to manufacture that cable also. So those would be, of course, not defense equipment as such. But yes, it is defense equipment. We record for defense only. All right, right. And I, I forgot to ask regarding the fiber optic cable revenue, which was around 1700 crore this year. How how do you expect it to grow over the next couple of years? Sorry, I I, I that's yeah, you know, my last uh, question. I expect in the current year we should be able to reach to about near about 2200 crores. Okay. And uh, year next to that, our estimation is somewhere between 26 to 2800 crores. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, you know, that's all from my side. I'll come back in the queue. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shivam Vashi from Eka Ventures. Please go ahead. Thank you for the, taking my uh, question. Uh, uh, can you speak a little loudly, please? Yeah. Uh, sir, just one question on the dead side. Uh, uh, we, I heard in the, during the call that we are doing a capex of around 500 crores during the year, correct, sir? So what? how are we going to fund that? Look, you know, uh, two things. One, we have raised equity. So right, part of the fund, funding would be through equity, and part would be debt. So, and, and also internal accounts. Internal accounts... Any, any debt equity ratio that we have, sir, we are going, uh, we have planned out? So it will, it will remain below 0 0.5. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah. And this... CapExa will be largely towards our 5G hardware-related products, or is there any? I tell you, uh, CapEx largely is one, expansion of optical fiber capacity, two, yeah. optical fiber cable capacity, three, uh, R&D expenses on design development of products, so CapEx related to that. So these right. are the three major heads of CapEx. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. That's, that, that helps. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Participants to ask a question, you may press star pen one. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing call. Uh, well, I thank you very much to all of you for uh, attending this conference call, any call of HFCL. And as I said, uh, we continue on our path of growth. Uh, three mantras we have given. New products, new customers, new geographies. And we are very well working towards that. Second thing we are told that uh, we will continue to increase our revenue from products. In terms of percentage, we have increased significantly, 27% last year to 43%. And we will keep on going on that path. Third, we had said that we are going to increase our exports. So which as we seen that we have increased our exports 125 to 361 crores. 
and we expect to do it more than double in the current financial year. So we also said that we will be designing new products aggressively. We are continuing on that path. We are designing new radio products like 5G radio products, Wi-Fi, unlicensed band radios. We are designing new uh, transport products, routers, switches. We are designing new kind of fiber optic cables, which is predominantly required in the export market. So all put together, we are proceeding on the path which we had charted out for ourselves as a strategy and we are very well progressing as a company on that strategy. So, uh, gentlemen, uh, I expect uh, exciting futures for us with the growth in the market, which is happening with 5G, Bharatnet, exports, and the opportunities which we are creating for ourselves, keeping in view what is happening in the market, going parallel to that, and then the defense products, which is our diversification we have taken, growth opportunity in that arena, because of the uh, government of India's insistence on making India, we see great opportunities there also. All put together, I'm sure we are there for an exciting future. So thank you, gentlemen and ladies, for being on the call. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes this conference call. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.